Welcome back to Teleturuan. Let's continue. Now, we will talk about the circulatory system and how the organs of this organ system work together. We will also include some helpful habits that promote proper functioning of the circulatory system. Have you ever wondered how the nutrients from the food that you eat reach the different parts of the body? Your body receives the nutrients and substance it needs via circulatory system, the body's transport system. It is composed of the heart, the blood vessels, and the blood. For that reason, it is also called the cardiovascular system. Cardio refers to the heart, and vascular refers to a channel or passage through the which blood passes. The circulatory system is responsible for distributing nutrients, oxygen, and other essential substances to all parts of the body. It also removes carbon dioxide and other waste material from the different parts of the body. The waste materials are then eliminated from the body through excretory system. The heart is a hollow muscular organ located in the chest between the lungs. It is about the size of a clenched fist. It pumps blood to the different parts of the body. The heart is enclosed in a protective sac called pericardium that enables the heart to smoothly contract and relax. Inside, the heart has four chambers. The two upper chambers are called atria and the two lower chambers are called ventricles. These chambers act as a reservoir for blood that enters the heart. Atria receive blood while the ventricle pump blood out of the heart. Valves are flaps of muscles found between the chambers. They prevent the backflow of blood and ensure that the blood flows only in one direction. The tricuspid valve is between the right atrium and right ventricle, while the bicuspid or the mitral valve is between the left atrium and left ventricle. Through this valve, blood can pass freely from atria to ventricles but cannot flow back to the atria. Two other valves control the flow of the blood out of the heart. The pulmonary valve lets the blood be pumped from the heart to the lungs. The aortic valve allows blood to be pumped from the heart to the rest of the body. As the chambers of the heart alternately contract and relax, distinct sound like this is produced. The first sound is produced by the vibration of ventricles when they contract and when the valves between the atria and ventricles close. The second sound is produced by the vibration of the valves within the blood vessels connected to the heart. Valves are flaps of muscles found between the chambers. Blood vessels are tubes that serve as passageway for blood to reach the different parts of the body. There are three kinds of blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries. The arteries carry blood away from the heart. All arteries deliver oxygen-rich blood to the lungs. Arteries have thick, tough walls that enables them to withstand increased blood pressure. The smallest arteries are called arterioles, and they are thinner than a strand of a thread. Veins bring blood from the different parts of the body back to the heart. The blood carried by veins contains carbon dioxide and other wastes, except for the pulmonary vein which carries oxygen-rich blood from the lungs to the heart. The walls of the vein are thinner and less elastic than arteries. The smallest veins are called venules. The smallest blood vessels are the capillaries, which connect the arterioles and venules. They have very thin walls that allow the exchange of materials from the blood to the body parts and vice versa. Oxygen and nutrients are transported from the blood to the body parts while carbon dioxide and waste leave the body parts and enter the blood. The blood delivers vital nutrients and oxygen to the different parts of the body. The blood also carries away waste products like 
carbon dioxide, and excess water for excretion. It also has white blood cells that protect the body from disease and infection. It helps control the body temperature by cooling active parts and muscles such as the heart and warming the less active parts like the toes. It transports hormones and other substances needed for stimulating body processes. The blood has two parts, the liquid and the solid part. The solid part consists of the blood cells and platelets, where the liquid parts consist of plasma. About 45% of the total volume of the blood composes the solid part, and 55% is the liquid part which makes the blood flow. Plasma is the liquid part of the blood, which is straw yellow in color. It is made up of 90% water, and the remaining 10% includes protein, nutrients, wastes, hormones, and dissolved electrolytes. The solid part of the blood consists of the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. These materials are suspended in the plasma. Each type of blood cells has a particular job to do. Red blood cells are produced in the red marrow of the bone. They are also called erythrocytes. Their function is to carry oxygen from the lungs and transport it to the body parts and remove carbon dioxide and other wastes. It contains hemoglobins, a substance which is rich in iron and gives the blood red color when it combines with oxygen. White blood cells are sometimes referred as leukocytes and they are generally bigger than the red blood cells but are fewer in number. There is about one white blood cell for every 500 red blood cells. They are said to be the soldier of the body because they protect and defend the body against disease and infection. The white blood cells are also produced inside the bone marrow. In the presence of an infection or injury, the bone marrow increases the production of the white blood cells. Platelets or thrombocytes are fragments that are relatively smaller and are irregular in shape. They play an important role in blood clotting. When some blood tissues are damaged due to the wound or cut, the platelets form the blood clots to prevent the loss of blood and close up the wounds. Lack of platelets in the blood can cause excessive bleeding. There you have it. Please stay tuned for more about circulatory system. We'll be right back after a few reminders. Welcome back to Teleturoan. Let's continue. In pulmonary circulation, the oxygenated blood or oxygen-poor blood coming from the organs and tissues of the body passes through a major vein, the vena cava. The vena cava branches into the superior vena cava that collects blood from the head and neck region and the inferior vena cava that collects blood coming from the lower part of the body. The superior vena cava and inferior vena cava conveys this blood into the heart where it's received by the right atrium. The blood is then pumped by the right atrium into the right ventricle. As the blood flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle, the tricuspid valves between them are open. When the right ventricle contracts, the blood is forced into the lungs passing through the pulmonary artery. In the lungs, the pulmonary artery subdivides until the smallest pulmonary arterioles are formed. The pulmonary arterioles are connected to the network of pulmonary capillaries, traverse the entire lungs. As blood reaches the network of capillaries that covers the air sacs, exchange of gases occurs between the thin membranes of the cells in the air sacs and capillaries. As the blood leaves the air sacs, the oxygen-rich blood passes through capillaries then into the smallest vein called the venous. 
Venules fuse together, forming a small veins until the blood reaches the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein that convey the blood to the left atrium of the heart, completing the pulmonary circulation. The systematic circulation, on the other hand, starts with the left atrium that receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs. When the left atrium contracts, the blood goes to the left ventricle. As the blood moves from the left atrium to the left ventricle, the bicuspid valves between them are open. Contraction of the left ventricle forces the blood to the different parts of the body by way of the aorta, the largest artery. As the blood passes through the aorta, the aortic semilunar valves within it are open. The aorta subdivides into small arteries, then forms the smallest arteries called arterioles. The arterioles are connected to the capillaries. When the blood reaches the capillaries, exchange of gases takes place between the blood and the body cells. Oxygen and nutrients are released in the cells while the blood picks up carbon dioxide. The blood will return to the heart passing through the veins. There are other special circuits in the circulatory system. We have the portal circulation, which is the path of blood from the arteries to the digestive parts of blood returning to the heart. We also have renal circulation, which is a special circuit where the path of blood flows through the capillaries to the kidneys where water and waste are removed. And lastly, we have coronary circulation, which is the path of blood within the heart itself. You have learned how important your circulatory system is. Once it fails to do its job, the whole body may suffer and might eventually lead to death. These can be avoided if you follow the proper care of the circulatory system. Here are some suggestions which you can do. As much as possible, avoid eating fatty and salty foods. High fat diet increases the risk of heart disease. Fatty foods are rich in cholesterol that causes clogging in the blood vessels. While too much intake of salt foods may cause the development of heart disease for people with high blood pressure. Avoid smoking cigarettes or staying with smokers. Smoking increases the risk of stroke and coronary heart disease. Exercise regularly. Exercise improves circulation of the blood throughout the body. And lastly, have positive outlook in life. Be happy and live peacefully with others. Stress and tension may cause heart failure. We're done with the parts and functions of the circulatory system. At this moment, let's check if you learned something. What do you call the smallest blood vessels in the body? Letter A, artery. Letter B, arterial. Letter C, capillary. Or letter D, venule. The answer is letter C, capillary. What type of blood cell defends your body from infections? Is it letter A, platelets? Letter B, red blood cells? Letter C, white blood cells? or letter D, plasma. Letter C, white blood cells. Why is blood important? Letter A, because it helps us keep healthy. Letter B, because it has water that flows with it. Letter C, because it keeps us hydrated. Or letter D, because it delivers vital nutrients to the body. The answer is letter D, because it delivers vital nutrients to the body. There you have it. Please stay tuned for our next lesson about nervous system and how the organs of this organ system work together. We'll be right back after a few reminders.